Today on VLAMP, we're showing you how to get started in Adobe Premiere. Welcome everyone to VLAMP, video lighting, audio, music, and photography how-to show. I'm of course your host, Matt Haslam, and today's episode is sponsored by my brand new album, Shadows, which is available now using the link in the description box below to matthasmproductions.com. Uh, you can download your copy over there and listen to the entire album and enjoy. We've talked about this album a lot on the show recently of how we uh, mixed the entire album and how we made all the music videos behind the scenes of uh, all the different camera equipment we used and how we got all the shots. So please check out all those episodes in this series, but um, also check out the album and download your copy now over at matthasmproductions.com. So today we are talking about Adobe Premiere, and we've um, we've covered on this show some of the more complex things in, in recent uh, editing tutorials. And one of our viewers reached out to us, and uh, their name is Caden Schultz. And thank you so much for your suggestion on an episode. Um, but that viewer asked me what kind of editing programs I use, and I will show you what editing programs I use right now. Basically. I use Adobe products, but I also use Final Cut Pro, and um, just some of my customers prefer me to use a, a Final Cut Pro, so I needed to buy an iMac computer, and that's the only reason I have an iMac. Um, I'm normally a very PC guy, but really for video editing, I found that Macs just work really well, and I know some c viewers are going to say out there, well, you know, uh, PC computers, if you have the right equipment and right graphics card and everything in it, they work just as fine, if not better. And that's fine. That's, um, and I, I would definitely use a PC if I could. It's just Final Cut Pro makes me use a uh, Mac computer because it's not available on PC. But here are the programs I use. I use Illustrator and Photoshop for um, all of my... Uh, video thumbnails and different photography things. I use Premiere Pro, Media Encoder. Uh, I use Microsoft Word for all my scripts. For my storyboards, I use Microsoft PowerPoint. I know these aren't big, huge programs. These are just regular programs you can buy on your computer. Um, Excel for all my accounting, Audition for uh, my audio recording, Final Cut Pro, and Premiere for video editing. Uh, I use After Effects for VFX and stuff like that, and uh, essential graphics panels, Lightroom for photo editing. These are not that crazy of programs. And Pluralize 3.5, which is probably the most important one that I use to synchronize all my audio up for all my episodes and for everything, really. Uh, when, it, when you're dealing with as many cameras as I do with 10 cameras on some shoots, you need uh, audio uh, synchronization tool such as Pluralize, and I will cover that program in another episode. Today we are just covering Premiere and the basics of how to get started, because that's something we've never covered on the show before, and that's a wonderful point Cadden point uh, pointed out to me. So we're going to get started here, and we're going to create a new project. You can create a new team project, which basically means uh, if you're working on a project with another editor or a team of editors, then you can create a team project, but I highly encourage you don't do that right away. I've done that before on some projects and work with editors across the country and stuff like that. Don't do that right away because that's that's more complex process than what you're ready for right now. Just open up a brand new project, and we're going to call this VLAMP Sample, and you want to call it something you'll remember. But here's something before you hit the OK button and just you know go on to the next step. Here's something they don't tell you when you download Premiere initially. This right here, your video rendering and playback settings, your renderer, what do you want to use? Now, if you have an iMac like I do, do not choose this OpenCL, the first version. That's the default version that, uh, that's the default renderer that Adobe Premiere wants you to use. However, that OpenCL is a graphics card that is not available for Mac computers. It is not on Mac computers. And to my knowledge, it doesn't work amazing on PC either. Um, I don't know why that's the default, but it is the default. So if you have a Mac computer, you want to choose either Metal or Software only down here, these bottom two options. I chose Metal because I have a pretty darn good iMac here, 
that I use, but if you have an older version or a, a, a slower version, then you want to use this final one here, which is going to be slower, but it's going to play your video really well. And that's what you want to use. You want to tell your computer to use the proper tools at its disposal. It's basically like if I chose OpenCL here, which is the default version, um, because I have an iMac, that graphics card is not in my computer. So I'm basically to telling my computer, I want to use a hammer to go screw that screw into the wall. It's not going to work. I need a screwdriver, you know? And uh, it's just basically telling it what, what tools to use. So I'm going to choose Metal here, and I'm going to hit OK. It's going to create that project for me. And it's going to open up to, let's say, editing here, just so we can get all on one screen. And you can create these workspaces at the top. Um, I have a lot of them because I just have chosen different formats of where I want things to go on my screen. I have multiple screens in front of me. Um, so I'm able to say for this kind of editing, when I'm editing multicam, I want it to be both my screens. I want this over here. I want that over there. When I'm doing color correction, I want this here, so on and so forth. You can choose all of those later. That's another tutorial for another day. But basically, you're going to be mostly working with this editing one at first when you're first starting out. So you say, this is our project file. Here's our timeline where basically you're going to do most of your editing down here at the bottom. Here's all your tools down here. And here's your project file of where all your files are going to come into to actually bring them into the project. Here's your source monitor, and you're going to be able to tell what's going to come in. And program monitor means what's going to actually go out. So source is what you're taking from the stuff you're bringing in, and program is what's going out to the actual audience out there. Uh, effect controls and effects are what you're going to add to uh, your actual clips down here in the timeline. So how do we import footage? Well, we're going to double click here to import media. And we're going to bring in, let's say, a piece of footage. Um, I'm just choosing one of the hard drives I have plugged in to my computer right now. But let's say we're going to bring in some footage from 2018 here. Uh, let's say our Super Bowl commercial. I want to bring this video clip in to my timeline. So I'm going to hit import, and now that video clip is in there. And I can hit this double click on that file to see it in my source monitor. I can scrub through it if I want. And I can also hit mark in or mark out on it, which also are the I and the O keys on my keyboard. So I can just hit in, I can hit the space bar, and I can hit O when I'm that clip is over. And now I can bring that clip in. If I just want the video, I can drag the video. If I just want the audio, I can drag the audio. But if I want the whole clip, I can drag from anywhere up here down into my timeline. And now it creates a new timeline for me with the same settings this video clip is. So it's a 19 by 20 image, I think. Make sure there. Um, yeah, it's 19 by 20 image. So a, a video clip. So it creates a 19 by 20 timeline for me. And it's really great in that way. But let's say you want to bring in other types of footage into your uh, timeline. Let's say I want to bring in some music. So I'm going to go to my music folder over here and a video background music. Let's say I want to bring in some uh, mechanical music. I can play that music, hear what it sounds like, and bring it in, import, double click on it to actually hear it. I can play that through, find a clip I want, and drag and drop the audio into my timeline and add it wherever I want. Now, let's say I want to add an effect to this. I can take, uh, let's say I want to bring this piece of footage in to my timeline, and then Go to my source monitor again. Let's say I want an in and then an out over here. And now I want to transition between those two pieces of video clip. I can go to effects and down into video transitions, dissolve, film dissolve. And there are hundreds of effects in here, by the way, that you can choose from. I'm not going to go through them all um, or even half of them because it's a lot. But now I can play this through and it transitions 
and it fades. And now I have my bare essentials there. But basically, editing is a very project-by-project project thing. I'm not going to be able to show you in this tutorial everything you might need to know, but at least you kind of understand how to bring footage in and get it to a timeline. But let's say you want to add a graphic to this. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit graphics over here, which is a, a standard one that uh, Adobe gives you as a workspace up here. You can just click on graphics. Uh, these MHP editing dual screen and editing uh, one screen, these are ones that I created myself, but graphics is one that they give you. So let's say I want to bring in a graphic. Rather than creating my own, I just want to drag and drop this graphic in, which I can do. And now I can double click on that. I can say Matt Haslam, and then I can put the second line, founder, CEO, and boom. Now I have a graphic to come in. And it just pops in, and then the end pops out, right? Nothing really fancy. But let's say I want something more crazy, uh, like a sp sports intro. Well, then I can bring in these. Or if I'm doing, let's say, uh, regular lower third, I can bring in any of these. But for instance, let's say I don't like anything Adobe gives me initially. I don't like any of these options. I can create my own over in After Effects or in Premiere, and I can save it as Essential Graphics. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to hit the T on my keyboard. And I'm going to type anything in here. Hello. How are you? And I can create this graphic. I can make it bigger if I want. And I can move it around however I want. On screen, it does not matter. But let's say I want to animate this piece of footage. I'm going to go to Effect Controls. And I'm going to hit position, let's say. Over here, I'm going to hit position again, keyframe it out, and then so it's out of screen, pops in, and then at the very end of that clip, it pops out. So now this animates, comes in, pops out, right? Pretty simple piece of graphic. And you can do a lot more animation here. I'm not going to get into how to do animation because that's a crazy thing that takes a lot of time. Uh, this is a very short, basic tutorial. All right. But while I'm here, let's say I want that graphic for a lot of my graphics. Let's say I'm creating a lower third or I'm creating a title that I want to reuse 50 times throughout this hour long project or something. Well, rather than keeping it, keep going and copy and pasting this, which I could do. I could copy that and then paste it over here. And now I have a graphic I can change and say, let's uh, say, my name is Matt, right? Now, when I go back over here, it's still, how, hello, how are you? And now it says, my name is Matt. So it, it didn't change over here. Now, if you create a title another way, like you used to have to do with the title editor, if you did change the title, you changed that title throughout the entire piece. So you had to watch yourself. But now, with this new Essential Graphics panel, you can have these graphics over and over again, and it does not matter. But let's say I created, an, uh, let's say I created a graphic today that I really love. And I want to use that graphic on multiple projects. And this is exactly what we do for VLAMP Show. We created the graphics for this show way back in like December of 2017. And now we're using them all throughout the year. And every new episode is a brand new project file for us. So how do we bring all these graphics into the episodes individually? And that way they're all the same graphics for every single episode. Well, here's what we do. We right click on a title that we like and we hit export as motion graphics template. And we're going to save this as a VLAMP sample in our essential graphics panel. And we're going to hit OK. It's going to take a second. But now if we hit browse over here on our essential graphics panel, we now have that title. 
So I can delete that title from the project and bring it into a new project, and boom, there it is. Now I can change that text however I want. I can change the color, the animation, whatever I want to it, and it's now a great title for us to use over and over again for years to come. Now, let's say I'm really happy with this project. How do I export this? How do I get it to YouTube or whatever kind of program I need to get it to? I'm going to hit File, Export, Media. Or I can simply just go on my keyboard and hit com press down Command and then hit the M key and it'll hit the M key, not the N key. The N, command N means you want to create a new sequence. Command M means, as in Matt, means you want to export your media. And what I always do down here is I hit entire sequence because in and out just means you can have a problem. Just don't do that. And don't hit your microphone. Um, <laughs> but I want to save it as H.264, which is the most standard uh, resolution, uh, most standard file format out there. You can also save it as an MP4, uh, or if you're just looking for the audio, you can save it as a waveform audio file. If you're just looking to put the audio as a podcast out there or something like that, which we sometimes do. But for this purpose, for most purposes, you're going to use H.264, match source high bit rate. Um, you can also have a bunch of different options here, which I never, ever use down here. I just don't. Even if I'm uploading to YouTube, I still hit match source high, high bit rate because that's what I want the file to be. It's going to say what kind of project settings do you want, um, what kind of coding do you want on all of it. Most of these are pretty standard. I always hit use maximum render quality because I want it to be the best it can possibly be. It's going to tell me what the file size is that I'm probably going to end up with. On here, output name, I can click on this output name. Let's say I titled my sequence wrong, and now I want to call it something else. I can hit on this little blue part, and I can title it however I want. VLAMP sample, right? And I can hit save. I can figure out where I want it saved on my computer and hit save. And then I can hit Q or export. Export, export means it's going to export right now and... It's going to use Premiere as its main uh, render engine, and it's going to just render out for me, but it won't allow me to continue editing on my project. If I hit Q, and this is really helpful for projects that, let's say, I have uh, you know, a, a big video file, but I want to also export little tiny clips from it, uh, like songs, or I want to export individual performances in that full feature length project and let's say I want to export that full thing as a two hour long show but then I want to export each individual song as its own video well I want to hit Q and that will bring it into Adobe Media Encoder and then I'm going to hit Q all the other times and make every single video I need and I can actually export 20 or 30 videos and I never have to worry about it I can hit Q all the time bring it into Media Encoder and then once I'm in Media Encoder, I can hit play, and I can leave it go. And that's exactly what I do. I literally edit all my projects overnight, and then basically what happens is I hit Q, I hit play in Adobe Media Encoder, which starts the encoding process for all my videos. I go to bed for a couple hours, I wake up, and all the videos are ready for me um, to uh, uh, upload to YouTube. So I always like to hit Q instead of export, but... You can uh, make your choice there as far as if you need to continue editing the project you're working on, hit Q. If you want to just get it done really, really fast, you can hit export. And you can export and it will basically go into your file and you can take that file and upload it to YouTube or whatever you're going with it. For purposes of this sample, I'm not going to do that because I don't actually need this project file to go out there. But that is the basics of Adobe Premiere. Um, I know there are a lot more things to cover. And I'm sorry I can't cover them all in one short little video, but I just can't. It literally takes hours and hours and hours to learn programs like this. And basically, I hope I showed you enough to get you started in Premiere. 
And basically how I learned was I learned the basics of what you just saw. And I learned, I actually learned even less because they didn't have the essential graphics panel back then. And I just started making things. That's how you learn. You learn by making things. And when you get to a point when you don't know something, you don't know how to do a certain effect, or you don't know how to, you have this really cool idea, but you really don't know how to do it in Premiere, search on YouTube for it. That's how you learn. You learn by doing and you learn by running into problems. And basically, that, that's how the whole video industry works, by the way. If you want the secret to success here, how you learn anything is by constantly running into problems and figuring out how to overcome them, whether or not that means going on YouTube and finding the answer or if it means just working on it until you figure it out. That's what it means. You'll learn a lot more by doing than by watching someone else do it. Um, and I know I say that as a how-to channel, but you do. And so I hope I showed you today enough that can get you started. And once you're started, just keep creating. I know the person that submitted this question is uh, a little young. And so I want to encourage you to just keep going. Just keep doing. And the more you do, the better you'll become. It does not, not matter um, if, if you want to create a narrative film one day and you want to do this whole scripted thing, and that's your dream. Don't start out doing that. You can have your friends help you and stuff like that and make little tiny films on the side, but I don't know. Go to uh, your school basketball game one day. Film it. F take any camera you have, and even if it's your, just your cell phone, film it. Take that footage and edit it. Edit down to the best moments of the game. When w when was the moment that you know your your home team scored the winning point? You know, edit down to those best moments and figure it out from there. Go around the basketball court and get a couple you know just shots of the basketball hoop and edit those down to like th the best moments and try to put it to some really crazy cool music. You know, an upbeat music. Create a little highlight film for your basketball team. Um, go out there and sh shoot around town one day and find the best parts about your town that make your town incredible. Um, when you go out to a restaurant, you know, film a little bit over dinner and, you know, get the steam coming up off of the, uh, the chicken or whatever kind of food you have in front of you and showcase that and showcase what restaurant you were at that day. Edit all that together and make like this little package of why why my town is incredible. You know, that's how I started out. Um, I'm not saying everyone has to start out the same way, but I'm saying it really does help to go out there and film anything and everything you can. Come back with that footage and say, how do I create a story from that? How can I make all this footage look beautiful? You know? And eventually you'll learn how to start using your camera better and better. Eventually you'll learn how to edit to the beat of the song. You'll learn all these things that you really need to know one day. Um, but you'll create all these little tiny videos along the way. And you'll be able to look back and say, like, wow, I've come a long way. Because if you start out by making this big, big thing, then that big thing is going to fail. I, I hate to tell you, it's not going to look good. Don't start out making big narratives. Start out by making these tiny little things and learn how to create a story first and build up to that big narrative. Because then that when you put out that big narrative, eventually it's going to be f amazing. So um, that's what I encourage you to do. Make short little things and learn programs as you go. You cannot learn these programs that are huge and very professional and Premiere and Final Cut, all these programs are industry standard. So you're not going to be able to use every single thing in these programs on the first day. You're not going to know it. I'm sorry I can't teach you everything in Premiere in one day. So go out there and learn as you go. Take the bare essentials that I taught you today and run with those. And as you hit problems, keep trying to learn how to overcome that next problem. And uh, you'll eventually learn pretty much all there is to know about Premiere. Even I don't know everything in Premiere yet, and I'm still learning, and I've been using it for, you know, 10 years now. So um, 
basically, that is our episode today. Thank you so much for joining us. Tune in every single Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for a brand new episode. And again, if you would, please use the link in the description box below to check out my brand new album, Shadows. It's an amazing album and all these amazing music videos that we come out with for it. Um, and by watching those music videos, maybe you'll learn uh, a little something about how to make really good music videos, hopefully. So thanks for tuning in today and see us back here next time on VLAN. Video lighting, audio, music, and photography, how-to show. I'm, of course, your host, Matt Haslam. And if you have a suggestion for an episode, leave it in the comments down below of this video because this whole episode was inspired by one of our viewers' comments. So I highly encourage you to keep commenting and uh, keep us on the air. Bye for now.